Hi, I'm Hazel Jebringas, the editor of the story. I am Drexler Dezaka, as the narrator of the story. Hi, I am Martina Sherlyn Marquez, the script writer of the story. Hi, I'm Brix Jebringas, as a lieutenant plan port in the story. I am Minel in the story. I'm Tim Patrick Gamab as the old woman in the story. Six minutes to six, said the clock over the information booth in York's Grand Central Station. The tall young army officer lifted his sunburned face and narrowed his eyes to note the exact time. His heart was pounding with a beat that shocked him. In six minutes, he would see the woman who had filled such a special place in his life for the past 13 months. The woman he had never seen, yet whose written words had sustained him faithfully. Lieutenant Blanford remembered one day in a particular, with worst of the fighting when his plane had been caught in the midst of a pack of enemy planes. In one of his letters, he had confessed to her that he often felt fear. And only a few days before this battle, he had received her answer. Of course, you fear. All brave men do. Didn't King David fear? That's why he wrote the 23rd Psalm. Next time you do yourself, I want you to hear my voice reciting to you. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. He had remembered, and it had renewed his strength. Now he was going to hear her real voice. Four minutes to six, a girl passed close to him, and Lieutenant Blanford stared. She was wearing a flower, but it was not the little red rose they had agreed upon. Besides, this girl was too young, about 18, whereas Holy Smainel had frankly told him she was 30. Well, what of it? I'm 32. He was 29. His mind went back to that book he read in the training camp, of human bandage, and throughout the book there were notes in a woman's writing. He had never believed that a woman could see into a man's heart so tenderly, so understandingly. Her name was on the book plate, Holy Smaina. He got hold of a New York City telephone book and found her the address. He had written, she had answered. The next day, he had been shipped out, but he had gone on writing. For 13 months, she had faithfully replied. When his letters did not arrive, she wrote anyway and now she believed he loved her and she loved him. But she had refused all his pleas to send him her photograph. She had explained. If you're feeling for me has any reality, any honest basis, what I look like won't matter. Suppose I'm beautiful, I'd always be haunted by the feeling that you had been taking a chance on just that. And that kind of love will, will disgust me. Suppose I'm plain and you must admit that this is more likely. Then I'd always fear that you were going on writing to me only because you were lonely and had no one else. No, don't ask for my picture. When you came to New York, you shall see me and then you shall make your decision. Remember, both of us are free to stop or to go on after that, whichever we choose. One minute to six, he flipped the pages of the book he held. Then Lieutenant Blanford's heart leaped. A young woman was coming toward him. Her figure was long and slim. Her blonde hair lay back and curls from her delicate ears. Her eyes were blue as flowers. Her lips and chin had a gentle firmness. In her pale green suit, she was like springtime come alive. He started toward her, forgetting to notice that she was wearing no rose. And as heat moved, a small provocative smile curved her lips. Going my way, sir? She murmured. He made one step closer to her. Then he saw Holly's mane out. She was standing almost directly behind the girl. 
a woman well past 40, her hair tucked under a wine hat. She was more than plump. Her thick, ankled feet were thrust into low-heeled shoes, but she wore a red rose on her rumpled coat. The girl in the green suit was walking quickly away. Blandford felt as though he were being split in two. So keen was his desire to follow the girl, yet so deep was his longing for the woman whose spirit had truly companioned and upheld him. And there she stood. He could see that her pale plump face was gentle and sensible. Her grey eyes had a worn wrinkle. Lieutenant Blanford did not get hostile. His fingers gripped away the foreign copy of human bondage, which was to identify him to her. This would not be love, but it would be something precious. A friendship for which he had been and must be ever grateful. He squared his shoulders, saluted and held the book out towards the woman, although even while he spoke he felt the bitterness of his disappointment. I'm Lieutenant Bloodboard, and you, Miss Maynell, I'm so glad you could meet me. May, may I take you to dinner? I don't know what this is all about, son. The young lady in the green suit, the one who just went by, begged me to wear this rose on my coat. And she said that if you ask me to go with you, I should tell you that she's waiting for you in that big restaurant across the street. She said, it was some kind of test. I've got two boys with Uncle Sam myself, so I didn't mind to oblige you. 